Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Mark, and in this video, we are studying kinematics. Warning, there is a little bit of mathematics and derivations involved in this video. So, if that's something that you kind of struggle with, hang tough and try your best to understand what's happening. Um, we'll do a lot more practice with all this stuff, but I do want you to understand where all this stuff comes from today. Um, so the word kinny, prefix kinny, K-I-N-E, stands for motion. We're going to see that prefix show up a few times this year in physics. And then matics stands for mathematics. So the word kinematics basically means motion math. Now here are our two big ideas. Big idea number one is that the slope of a velocity versus time graph gives us the acceleration. Big idea number two is that the area under a velocity time graph gives us the displacement. Now we can write two equations to represent big idea number one. Just acceleration equals slope, or put it in y equals mx plus b form. Velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So what our goal is here is to see if we can write an equation to represent the displacement starting with the area under our velocity versus time graph. So that's our goal in this video, to come up with some equations that come from that big idea. So let's sketch a velocity versus time graph, maybe something that looks like that. We're going to have it not start at zero, and that way we get a more general um, idea of what's going on. The big idea is that the area underneath that graph is equal to our displacement. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to write a general equation for the area under that graph. So if I kind of put some um, variables on there, initial velocity, final velocity, and time, then I can break this thing up into two different shapes. There's a rectangle and then there's a triangle. Now you guys should know the formula for the area of a rectangle, just base times height. Well, the height of that rectangle is v naught, 0 minus v naught, and the base would be t, so our time t. So the area of that rectangle, in terms of our variables, would be v naught times t. The area of a triangle can be found by doing 1 half base times height. So again, the base is t, and the height would be v minus v0. So the whole thing, this whole length right here, would be v. This length is v0, and so this length right here is V minus V naught. And so my area for my triangle is 1 half T times V minus V naught. So what we're going to do is we're going to add those two pieces together. So delta X equals the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle. So here's my rectangle. Here's our triangle. And then we're just going to simplify that a little bit. Like there's two t's in there. We're going to see if we can kind of combine some terms. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of distribute that one half t into all those different things. And then if you notice, you've got v naught t, v naught t. Those are two things that I can add together, or in this case subtract, since there's the negative sign right there. So that would look like that. So just combine those terms together like that. And then to kind of make it a little bit easier to remember and write down, I'm just going to factor out a 1 half out of both of those and a t out of both of those. And so that's a general equation. Now that we've derived it, we can use it whenever we need it. And so on our um, equation chart, we have a couple of equations 
this is not one of them, so it's one that we would want to try to remember, or be able to go backwards and do all this from beginning to end. But we can do a little bit more with that. We take that equation. A lot of times we don't know exactly what the final velocity is, especially in real life situations where we don't have a way to measure what the final velocity something's going to be. But we may know the acceleration. So let's combine our new equation right here with the definition of slope right there. So if I just substitute that expression right here in for the velocity, and then just keep everything else the same, now I can rewrite this equation in terms of the acceleration rather than the final velocity. So doing a little bit of simplifying, it will look like that. And then again, I'm going to factor the 1 half t to everything. And then when we distribute, or uh, multiply rather, we would get something like this. This is a second equation we can use any time that we need it. This equation is actually written on your um, AP exam formula chart. So it's not something you necessarily have to remember, although by the time you get good at this stuff, you probably will remember it. Pull it out whenever you need it. Um, so, real exciting, right? We're having a good time so far with all these new fancy equations. So, to kind of summarize, we're going to write down all our equations for accelerated motion. Those two equations are essentially the same. Those are the definition of um, acceleration, which comes from the slope of the velocity time graph. That equation is written two different ways. Notice the difference over here. I just left it as delta x. Over here, I added x naught to both sides, depending on you know the wording of a question or exactly what we want to find. Um, we could use either form of that. And then same thing with that equation. I could leave it as delta x, or I could add the x naught to both sides and get rid of the whole delta thing. Um, just kind of depends on what works best for you, really. Um, a lot of people write them different ways, and we just need to be able to kind of deal with that. So all those equations on the left side are equivalent to all the equations on the right side. We can write another equation that looks something like that. Um, and the purpose of that equation is that it removes the time from the equation. It doesn't depend on t like every single other equation we've dealt with and with motion. Um, and that's an equation that we'll derive later once we learn about energy and stuff. Now we're making one big assumption whenever we uh, use all these equations. The assumption that we're making is that the acceleration has to be constant. So if that's not true, then you really can't use these equations. So that's going to be true for right now, but later on during the year it won't be true we'll have to learn some other things to handle those kind of situations. So let's go through a short problem solving method. The first step in any problem involving a complicated thing like accelerated motion is to write down the things that you know, which we're going to call givens, and the things that you don't know, want to find out, which are called unknowns. Then identify the equation out of all those um, equations that we just listed that relates those variables I don't know what happened to the Q um, so identify the equation that relates all those variables together the easiest way to do that is to identify the variable that's not involved in the problem and then find the equation that's missing just that variable so there's like six variables involved with all these things. Each equation has five variables in it. So just identify the thing that you don't care about, and then that'll tell you what equation to use. 
third step is to solve the equation for your unknown. When I say solve it, I mean solve it before you plug in your numbers. And then the fourth step is to plug in the numbers and then evaluate, do all the arithmetic. Fancy term for that is the substitute. So if you kind of key in on the capital letters through there, like the G and the U, the E, the S, and the S, it kind of spells out a little acronym. It kind of spells out GUESS. So some teachers will refer to this as the GUESS method, um, which is kind of a misnomer because you're doing the exact opposite of quote-unquote guessing. And so that's kind of an easy way to remember the steps you should follow. Um, in a few days, you won't need to remember that anymore because it will just kind of be intuitive to you. So let's look at a real simple example. Uh, let's suppose we have some random car that slows down from 30 meters per second to 10 meters per second in 5 seconds. We want to know how far it travels. So your first step is to write down your givens and your unknowns. Those are the six variables that could be involved in this kind of a question. Obviously, the initial velocity is 30 meters per second. That's how fast it was going. And the final velocity is 10 meters per second. The other obvious one is that your time is 5 seconds. What I'd recommend that you do is make your initial position 0, and that way your final position is your question mark. We just want to know how far it travels. It doesn't tell us where we began, so make the beginning point 0 to make your life a little bit easier. The last variable in that list is the acceleration, and there's no reason for us to worry about the acceleration at all. We don't care about the acceleration, in other words. So what we've done right there is we've done the G and the U part. We have written down our givens. We've written down the unknowns that we want to find, in this case, the final position. The next step is to determine what equation we should use. So if we go back a little bit, there's our list of equations. Identify the equation that doesn't have acceleration in it, because that's the variable we don't care about. And so if you inspect all those, you'd find that this equation does not have acceleration in it. All the other equations do. And so that would be the correct equation to use in solving this problem. So let's get back to all that. Let's write down that equation, and again, it doesn't matter what form you use. Um, since it's written like this on the equation charts, I'll typically write it like this, with the x naught broken out of the um, delta x part. So that's our equation. The next step is to solve. When you solve an equation, I recommend that you take out anything that is zero before you start solving the equation. And so take out your initial position since it's zero, and we've solved the equation. Since we're looking for x, x is already by itself, I don't have to do anything else to that equation to solve it. Here in a second we'll see an example where that's not the case. So once it's solved, now all we've got to do is substitute in our values. So that's the other s. And then evaluate. Do all the arithmetic. So remember, do your parentheses first, do substitute in your units, and then cancel units as you go. And so if you evaluate 1 half times 40 times 5, that would give you 100. And the only unit that you're left with is a meter, and so that would be 100 meters. So always be sure to keep track of your units as you're going, because um, if you don't get the expected unit, like meters for positions, then you've done something wrong. So let's look at another example. Suppose that you have a golf ball. It's rolling at a velocity of 6 meters per second when it starts to roll up a ramp. Uh, if you've ever played putt-putt golf, this may be a familiar situation to you. So after traveling 4 meters along the ramp, the ball now has a velocity of 4 meters per second. And the thing we want to figure out is what is the acceleration of the ball? So those are all the variables that we could possibly be dealing with. Press pause for a second and just see if you can fill in the variables, the givens that you know, 
and that that you don't know. Okay, so after reading that real carefully, hopefully you saw the initial velocity was 6 meters per second. Final velocity was 4 meters per second. Again, make your initial position 0. We just care how far it goes, not what its position is relative to someplace else. Final position will be 4 meters. That's how far it travels. Your acceleration is the thing you're being asked to find. And so t is the thing you don't care about. So go back up to where you wrote down all those equations and see if you can identify the equation we should use in this situation. Do you have an equation? I would use the equation that doesn't have time in it, which is this one right here, the one that we'll derive later. And so there's our equation. A is the thing that we're solving it for. There's where A is. So we need to undo all the things that are being done to A, get A by itself. Don't go plugging in your numbers here yet. Then you'll be doing algebra and arithmetic at the same time, and you're more likely to make a mistake. Leave everything in terms of the variables. So to solve this thing for A, I would undo the addition first like I would subtract the v naught squared from both sides, cancel it out on the right, and so now my equation will look like that. And then the next step, divide both sides by 2 delta x, undo the, mul or undo the multiplication by division, do the same thing to both sides, cancel out on the right side, and so now my equation looks like that. Then it's just a matter of substituting in my numbers with their units and then evaluating. So squaring all the things on top, doing the multiplication on bottom will look something like that. And so 16 minus 36 would be negative 20. And then on bottom we'd still have 8 meters. And so negative 20 over 8 is negative 2.5 so you should expect a negative because this is something moving forward and slowing down negative should not surprise you and then cancel out the meters there and we'd be left with meters per second squared so since that is the unit of acceleration we probably did everything correct we end up with the expected unit then that indicates that we probably did it right Okay, so we did two simple examples there. We are going to do much more in class. We'll spend the entire next class period practicing this because in order to master this skill, this is an important skill we're going to need all year long, we must practice. So that's what the next class period is going to be dedicated to, practicing. I will see you then. Ta-ta.